In the wake of the battle under the stars, the Noldor of Beleriand were perilously close to descending into a civil war. The host of Fingolfin, who had been betrayed by Feanor in Arman, had accomplished the seemingly impossible feat of crossing the treacherous Hel Caraxa and had arrived in Middle-earth, filled with bitterness and fury. But after Fingon the Valiant had rescued Maedros from the torment of Angband, a great change came upon the Noldor. The long-standing enmity between the two houses was finally eased, and the kin once again stood united. Together, they set a vigilant watch upon the southern borders of Dordadaloth, and dispatched emissaries to explore the lands of Beleriand and engage with its people. In Mithrim, a council was convened, and Angrod, son of Finarfin and envoy of his elder brother Finrod, returned from Doriath with permission for the Noldor to settle in the Northlands, but also with a terse warning from Thingol, the High King of all the Teleri of Beleriand. Caranthia, one of the sons of Feanor, brazenly dismissed the threat, mocking Angrod at the council. This angered Angrod, who had omitted the negative aspects of their exile from his report, and the kinslaying at Alqualonde. For Thingol, the king of Doriath, was the brother of Olva, the prince of Alqualonde, whose people were mercilessly slain by Feanor's orders during the Noldor's pursuit of the ships of the Teleri. The harsh words that were spoken troubled the Noldor, and they feared the wrathful spirit of the sons of Feanor, which always seemed to erupt in violence and strife. However, Maedros, who sought to keep his people united, relinquished all claims to the throne of the Noldor and passed it over to his uncle, and Fingolfin thus became the first high king of the Noldor in exile. Though this decision did not sit well with the proud sons of Feanor, all who heard it recalled the prophecy of Mandos, that the house of Feanor would be dispossessed forever. Yet this noble act united the Noldor and allowed them to establish mighty kingdoms in Middle-earth, while Morgoth's forces still reeled from the unveiling of the light of the sun and the moon. Thus Fingolfin, the High King of the Noldor, established his rule over the lands of Hithlum in the northwest of Beleriand, along with his son Fingon by his side. Hithlum was a realm shrouded in mists and vapours that rolled down from the Thangorodrim, the towering volcanic mountains that stood as a constant reminder of Morgoth's looming presence. Thus the Noldor named it Hisilomi, the land of mist. Hithlum was a land apart, separated from the rest of Beleriand by the mighty Arid Wethrin, also known as the Mountains of Shadow. These towering peaks stood as a forbidding wall to the south and east, offering only a few passes through which one could enter. As such, it provided a natural defence against any who would seek to invade. To the west, the echoing mountains, or arid Lomin, curved in a northwestward direction towards the perilous waters of Hel Caraxe. Amidst Hithlum and the vast sea, in the farthest reaches of the northwest, lay an arid and lifeless expanse, known unto all as Lammoth. This barren wasteland, draped in desolation, stretched out as a shoreland region, untouched by the nurturing hand of growth. Lammoth held within its boundaries a tale of great strife, for it was here that Ungoliant, the Weaver of Shadows, launched her assault upon Morgoth in her insatiable desire to devour the wondrous Silmarils. As the Dark Lord was ensnared in the grip of Ungoliant's webs, his anguished cries resounded through the forlorn landscape. The echoes of his lamentation clung to the land, forever imprinting their mark upon the very essence of its existence. And the land was transformed into an acoustic wasteland, its very foundation altered by the indelible power of Morgoth's despair. From that moment onward, it became known as the Land of the Great Echo, a place forever burdened by the resonant aftermath of his mighty cry. And there, lingering in the air, the echo of his sorrowful wail endured ere the ruin of Beleriand. Nestled upon the southern border of Lammoth, spanning the Firth of Drengist, lay a place shrouded in infamy and ill repute. Loscar was the site where Feanor made landfall during the long night. 
he arrived aboard the stolen swan ships of the Falmari, harboring a heart bent on vengeance and recklessness. In a moment of fiery impulse, Feanor commanded the wanton destruction of those majestic vessels, deeming the forces led by his kin, Fingolfin and Finrod, as burdensome baggage unworthy of his grand pursuit. Legends speak of the myriad voices carried upon the winds of Lammoth, cascading northwards, alerting Morgoth to the arrival of Feanor's host in the realms of Middle-earth. To the south of Hithlum, the Ered Lomin served as a boundary separating it from the land of Nevrast. Despite its cold rains and perpetual grey skies, Hithlum was a fertile land that could sustain life. It was further divided into two distinct regions. Mithrim, where the high kings of the Noldor built their halls and held court, and Dor Lomin, which later became a fief of the House of Hador, a loyal ally of the Noldor. To the east of Hithlum, beyond the rushing river Syrian, lay Dorthonian, a harsh and rugged land that became the abode of the sons of Finarfin, Angrod and Aegnor, whilst Ladros was ruled by Finrod. This highland region spanned a vast distance of 60 leagues from its western to eastern borders, with the imposing Echoriath, or encircling mountains, forming a natural barrier to the west. The southern border was guarded by the ominous Ered Gorgoroth, or Mountains of Terror, a forbidding range that loomed over the desolate landscape. As one travelled southward, Dorthonian rose gradually from the plains of Ardgarlan, its rocky terrain dotted with bleak tarns and barren tors, leading eventually to the perilous precipices of the arid Gorgoroth. From Mithrim, the sons of Feanor departed with a host of great numbers and made their way eastward through the wide and open lands that lay between the lofty peaks of Dorthonian and the towering Ered Luin. This was a land that would come to be known as the March of Maedros, where the Noldor had little natural defence against the assaults from the north. Thus it was that the sons of Feanor, determined to safeguard their people, raised a mighty fortress upon the greatest hill of that region. It was known as Himring, a place wide-shouldered and bereft of trees, with a flattened summit encircled by a multitude of lesser hills. From its ramparts, the defenders could gaze upon the surrounding countryside with keen eyes and sound the alarm at the first sign of danger. In the years that followed, the Noldor grew content to let Morgoth bide his time in Angband, with no siege laid nor attack launched against him. Believing that his foes were unprepared for war, Morgoth plotted to launch a sudden assault of his own. Hordes of orcs by the thousand marched south from Angband's gates, while the earth trembled and the iron mountains erupted in flames. Though at first Morgoth's forces hesitated at the sight of these new lights, they soon overcame their fear and pressed on, and the numerous bands of orcs surged through the pass of Syrian and Maglor's Gap, fighting small battles along the way and penetrated deep into west and east Beleriand. But Thingol shut the gates of Doriath and refused to fight, and the Lequendi of Osiriand fought no more battles after their leader had been slain in the first battle of Beleriand. In the west, Fingolfin led his army against the orcs, while in the east, Maedros unfolded the proud banners of Feanor. Morgoth, in his ever crafty guile, devised a scheme to seize dominion over Dorthonian, that lofty domain guarded by the watchful Angrod and Egnor. This land stood as a bulwark, blocking direct passage from the northern realms into Beleriand. As scattered bands of orcish skirmishers broke off and ventured into the southern reaches, the main host of their horde launched a fierce assault upon the highlands of Dorthonian. There, Angrod and Aegnor held them off until armies under Fingolfin and Maedros counterattacked on the plains of Lothlan and Ardgalan, trapping the orcs between them. The Noldor's envelopment tactic proved successful, caught in a vice of elven wrath the hordes of Morgoth 
were unable to withstand the combined might of the sons of Feanor and Fingolfin, and they were mercilessly crushed underfoot. Though the few orcs managed to escape the fray and flee back towards Angband, they were not safe from the wrath of the Eldar. The elves pursued their fleeing foes, hunting them down across the grasslands of Ard Galen, leaving not a single orc alive to return to Angband. This was the greatest victory of the elves over Morgoth, and it became known as the Glorious Battle, or Dargor Aglareb. Yet it served as a warning, and the Eldar redoubled their defences, maintaining a vigilant blockade known as the Siege of Angband for 400 long years to keep Morgoth's forces contained within his cursed domain. Within the borders of Beleriand, the realms of the Noldor flourished and grew under the wise guidance of Fingolfin. Casting aside the chains of despair that Morgoth had sought to impose upon them, the Noldor defied their fate and embraced the resilience of their spirit. As the years passed, the Noldor expanded their dominion, carving out new territories and establishing mighty strongholds. With each stone laid and each tower raised, the light of Aman, kindled in the hearts of the exiled Noldor, radiated throughout the land. These citadels, resplendent in their grandeur, became centers of knowledge, wisdom and art. The Noldor did not hesitate to share their rich lore and imparted their wisdom to their allies and brethren, kindling the flame of enlightenment. If you enjoyed watching this video, please take a moment to like and share it, as it greatly helps the growth of the Tales of the Rings. If you're truly passionate about supporting my work, I invite you to consider joining my Patreon.